good afternoon, good evening, or good morning from wherever you're joining us from today in the world. Welcome to a Microsoft Reactor Sydney live stream event. And today we will be doing another episode of Coding the Next Generation. Today we'll be talking to Zach Everett, who you can see on screens here. He's recently done a stint with Microsoft to complete his year 10 work experience. So we'll hear about how Zach got involved with tech and what drove him to want to do work experience and pursue a future in uh, a career in tech. Uh, we'll also talk through the many uh, tech projects he built and deployed and events he attended during his short time in the Microsoft team. And he'll give you his take on what it's like to be a cloud advocate at Microsoft. So firstly, um, we've also got on our screens Renee Noble, who most of you know is our regional cloud advocate at the Reactor in Sydney. Um, firstly, a bit of background on her for whoever's joining us for the first time today. She's passionate about technology, education, community, and bringing them all together in person and online. But I'll let Renee expand on anything else if she'd like. And we've also got Zach, who I also briefly introduce you to. He is a 16-year-old student currently in year 10 living in Melbourne. Uh, Zach has been programming for over two years and has taught himself to code but mostly watching YouTube videos. He's quite proficient at game development in Unity and C Sharp programming and, programming and has a little experience with Python. Today we'll be speaking for about 30 to 35 minutes with about five to ten minutes for questions. However, do ask us as many questions as you like throughout in the Q&A section and we'll try and answer as many as possible. We'll also include a link to our survey at the end with the event code if you have time to fill that out it would be great and um, there'll be a link back to this um, on-demand version straight after today on our YouTube channel so I'll share with you guys that at the end of the session you'll also see additional resources in um, the Q&A section there that support today's presentation so for now I'll hand the floor over to Renee to begin so thanks Renee and over to you Thanks so much, Sarah. And I'm super excited to be here today with Zach to talk about all the stuff that we did in, it seems like a very long time ago, and you are here for such a short period of time, but we got so much stuff done. Uh, so before we get into it and I get you, know, exp get you to introduce yourself and things, what did you think? Like, did you have fun at your Microsoft work experience? <laughs> it was great doing the work experience at Microsoft. I had lots of fun and we got to work on a lot of cool projects. So I really liked it. And we'll go through what those projects are soon. So absolutely, yeah. No, I had a lot of fun. It was you know, nice to have a little buddy. Like you know, we're we're working at home, so it was nice to have Zach here alongside me uh, to join me. So Zach, uh, it's a friend of a friend of a friend. Uh, so yeah, I got to have Zach come along with me for work experience because I am lucky to have the kind of job in tech where you can really have someone do work experience with you and get to do a meaningful aspect of your job. So kind of how I describe my job is I, you know, know things or I go and learn things and then I work out how to tell other people about those techie things. Um, and that's absolutely something that you can do at any stage in your you know, tech journey. You can always be learning and teaching people how to do that. So I had the privilege of having Zach come along with me uh, and do a bunch of the weird stuff that I do during a week. Uh, so next up, I'm going to get Zach to introduce himself and tell you, yeah, tell us about how how you kind of came along to get to be at Microsoft Work Experience. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you. Well, we'll start off with this slide here. So who I am. So here's some things about me, and we're going to then go into what my past experiences are, mm -hmm. then some new things that I learned while at my work experience, and then some final questions. So some things about me first. So my favorite sport is tennis. So I play a lot of tennis outside of school and programming. So, and then I really enjoy doing programming and gaming. When I started to learn how to do programming about two years ago, and my goal is to, once I finish school, go to university for computer science. And I'm also currently a year 10 student from Melbourne. So they're just some simple things about me. So here's some past things I've worked on. So here are two games that I've actually made. So we've got our first one here, which is just some car game that I've made. It was both these games are made in Unity with C sharp, C -sharp programming. So this car game is just a simple race, one or two players, and you're just trying to get your best time possible. And it does have support for three or four players, but you're playing on a keyboard. So not really enough space to click all of your buttons all on one keyboard. And then my other game that's more recent is this cafe game. 
you're just trying to design your cafe and make it more efficient. You can make food. You have to plan out how much profit you'll make. And it's all about just making profit and expanding your cafe and making it better. So that's what I've done for those. Super cool stuff. I got to have a look at it while Zach was here with me. And I, I'm not really a game, a graphic game developer. I haven't done any myself. And I'm honestly like, I'm like, if I went to get started, I'm sure I could get somewhere. But having not done any myself, I'm like, this is so cool. And you've only been programming for two years at this point. Or like, this is kind of what you did in that two period, two year period while you were learning, which is just super incredible. Sort of around when I got my PC, I got it for just Christmas about two years ago. So uh, ever since then, I just saw some ad on YouTube for like some course that you could do programming on. And ever since then, I've been doing lots of programming. So that was great. So cool. Awesome. So yeah. What have you got to show us next up, Zach? Yep. Yeah. Go. Awesome. So, so here we go. Next slide. Why Microsoft work experience. So, well, I really enjoy technology and programming. So I was very keen to do my work experience at some sort of technology companies. So it was no brainer to go to Microsoft. So it was really lucky that Renee and Microsoft were happy to take me and help me do my work experience. So that was great. Now here's some things on my work experience. Had a few errors here. So some of the videos aren't loaded, but I'll get those shown to you in a second though. Five minutes so, ago, they were working. So technology yeah, they were just not working always our friend. <laughs> so the first thing we did, I think this was on the first day of work experience, we went to the Conservatorium of Music. So that's a university in Sydney focusing on music, I think it was. Is that right, Renee? So yeah, it's part of the University of Sydney. So not where you might think you would go to the music department of a university for your first day of tech work experience, but Zach's going to tell you why it all makes sense. So for the entire first day of my work experience, I pretty much had the end goal of getting this giant piano that you can see in some of these photos here. And the whole point of it is the um paired up with these little like microcontrollers they were called cookerberries i think they Correct. were right yes cookerberries and connect them up to the fancy little cardboard piano and once you step on it it'll play your sound for you so we had to program all of the little individual microcontroller or cookerberries to get the piano working so that was really fun and then we got to go into the university of sydney and show it to all of the university students. So that was fun. Now I'll get these videos shown to you. So let me just start off with this one. So as we you can see here, this- for them. We didn't have sound for them, but it does, Zach is playing a piano there. Ah, uh, legit. And <laughs> you guys can't hear this, but I can hear it right now. So it is making noise and all the different notes make their own individual noises. So that's pretty good. Uh, his next one little bag that when you click on the snake, little snake parts, it'll play the color or show the color on little controller thing here with the lights. And it'll also play a sound, which once again, unfortunately you can't hear, but that's a cool little bag right there. And Renee, you might need to help me out here with what this was called again. Yeah, this is called the Play-Doh Xylophone. Uh, and once again, you can't hear it, but when Zach puts his hand in different places on this xylophone with the Play-Doh in the middle, it is making different noises based on the difference in voltage. Yeah, so further along you do, I think it's a different pitch to when you start it down on this end. So you can almost play your own musical instrument with it. So it's quite magical almost. Mm. All right, so back to my slides. Here we are. So, yep, there's just our images as well of me setting it up as well and a quick selfie with Renee. Yeah, and while you were there, you also, like, got to help. Like, you really were doing my job because you'd been practising all day on making this giant piano. And we actually only set up half of the piano when we got there because we wanted the music students who are enrolled in a technology for music class. They're all training to be music teachers, but to have that integration with technology within your music class is something that they're you know aiming to learn so Zach was actually teaching them how to code the cookerberries to make their own individual piano notes so they all together could build the piano or you know the play-doh xylophone or whatever they were working on so yeah that was really fun that part there 
Uh, next, Renee got me to make a web page of a quick resume for myself. So here we have a web page I made. It was on, it was a Microsoft course I think you had me follow. Yeah, so if you uh, want to make your own resume using uh, GitHub pages and use just some HTML, CSS, uh, there is a course that's linked on the event uh, that you can follow uh, how to make a resume website. So this is my simple website I made. It has just, oh, it's a bit blurry, I think, because it's a bit small. Sorry about that one. But we've got our contact information that you can put on your website. You can get some quick skills in there, show your education, just little dot points you're about, just things about you, some work experience you have, which I'll certainly be adding this onto my list. And then just some awards you have. You could add in as many things as you want and it's formatted really nicely and you get to learn HTML and CSS. So that was really fun. Had you done any HTML and CSS before you did uh, that project? I had actually done a tiny little bit as at the start of this year. In fact, about when I did this work experience, I was about halfway through a web design and infographics subject mm. at school. So awesome. that's all about making web pages and some HTML and CSS. Cool. So well, that's could, yeah. a bit of bring overlap. That to life. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I guess you get to bring it to life and you actually got to deploy it on the internet, which is I think you were really excited about when you were here because you're like, oh, it's actually just so easy to just put it on the internet. Like I would have put all yeah. of my assignments on the internet. Yeah, so in fact, immediately after I had just published all of my previous assignments from school on the internet and showed it to my friends. So that was fun. Awesome. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah, another video problem, but I do have this one also saved to my computer. Excellent. So this is um, a web page again. So what this will do is you enter in some information and it'll give you an invite to a party. So let me just bring this up. Here we go. So you just enter in your information. So the event's name, who do you want to invite? So we're inviting Renee to the birthday party. Excellent. It's on the 21st of April. Let's see. 11. You can type in the numbers individually. What's your name? Teddy. So that's actually my dog's name. So my dog, Teddy, is inviting Renee to his birthday party on his birthday. Lovely. So that's good. That's and so it generates this really nice invite that you could set to anyone. So yeah, that was good. Yeah. So to do that, Zach, Zach followed through my code to cloud course that I did earlier in February. So if you want to learn how to make a website like Zach did, I think you just watched the first two of the four episodes and you had that yeah, up and running. Code to cloud awesome. web essentials that you made, Renee. That's what it was called. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And I was super impressed. Zach came along and then like, yeah, we spent the first day preparing for the conservatorium and we went there. And then the second day you blew through the uh, resume web, web page in uh, less than a day. And I was like, oh boy, I'm going to have to think of some more stuff to give you to do, Zach. So I got you to work on this one and do some real like, you know, full stack development to get this <laughs> working, which is really cool. Yeah, had a bit of Python, had a bit of HTML, CSS even. So it was a bit of everything for this one. Um, why is this? Okay. Here we are. Oh, oh I've actually forgotten to put a slide in, actually. So we've actually also did one other thing while I was at my work experience. I helped out Renee with a, uh, yes. almost a, it was your, in the code garden, I think in it was. In the code garden. That's right. So my weekly live stream every Tuesday, we teach, you know, we've been working on Python, uh, but and, and, early Python concepts that are essential for everyone to know. So what are we teaching now that week, Zach? I think we were teaching the basics of if statements in that week of the In the Code Garden. That's correct. So, yeah, so that was great to have Zach along. And, yeah, just having a buddy to watch over my shoulder and give me suggestions for variable names or have someone to be like, what do you reckon this is going to do? It was a, Zach was a complete, like, ace at it, I think. Uh, so, you know, Zach's welcome on my stream anytime. <laughs> come and teach teach uh, the world how to code. Um, but, yeah, I feel like going into it, you're like, oh, I don't know exactly how this is going to be, but absolute natural. How did you find being a, a live streamer for the day? Oh, I think that may have prepared me quite a bit for this right now, in fact. So right. I think 
that was good. It was very fun and making this a lot easier now. Also, I've just <laughs> noticed your kind words in the chat, Jack, so thank you. <laughs> Yes, really impressive game development. I'm so impressed with these from Jack in the chat. So, yeah, awesome. Okay, and now since my work experience, some things I've done after. So here is actually a Connect4 project that I've been working on really recently. So I'd say about a month ago I just had nothing to do one day and so just spent like maybe a couple hours on an afternoon and made a Connect4 game in Python. You could click all of your circles and place your connect four down what it, I don't know what they're called exactly but mm -hmm. it's quite good and then recently in like the last week or two I've actually made a bot for it that uses a minimax algorithm to find the best possible option to a certain depth to have the move so I've actually never beaten this bot that I made <laughs> for connect four which is quite sad but it's <laughs> Good. <laughs> I love when my work outsmarts me. It's a good but bad feeling at the same time. It's it's complicated but satisfying. <laughs> so yeah, if uh, I'm not sure if the stream will show it in a high enough quality, but it also prints down in the bottom left in the console window what it actually thinks about mm. the current game that the bot's in. It'll say, I think I'm winning, I think I'm losing, I have a guaranteed win, I I'm losing or if you play perfectly you are going to win this game so it just gives you a rough idea of how the game's going it also will rank your position so it'll say you're winning by four points which doesn't mean much but it gives a rough estimate of what the bot thinks about the game and it also says what depth it searches to so I've got it working at a seven depth before it starts slowing down to the point that it's unusable on my computer so that's all working well so that was fun I've spent a few weeks working on that. That's super cool. I love how the bot talks to you. It could also like give you like little sledges like, oh, you can never beat me. I'm a bot. I'm a take you or, down. Yeah. <laughs> when it gets to the end of the game as well, if it just notices that no one's going to win, like, you know, those situations where there's just four spots mm -hmm. left, no one's going to win. You can just figure out in your head that you just keep taking turns. It's not going to win. It'll even say this game's going to end in a draw. So it's pretty smart. And really I think cool. I've versed it maybe 10 times. I think my parents have versed it as well. I've managed to draw with it once and every other time anyone else that's versed has lost. So <laughs> that's really cool. That's super clever work. I love was it. Good. Um, and that's all so fast for my programming career and Microsoft work experience. So yeah, yes. super cool. And I love that, like reflecting back on it and like seeing all the awesome work you did only in four days because we had the Easter week long weekend. So we didn't even get the full week and Zach managed to do all of that as well. So we went to the conservatory and we prepped the giant piano and Zach basically made that work all by himself. We took it down to the conservatory and we taught a bunch of uni students who are music students, teachers, soon to be teachers, uh, how to program. We did a live stream. We made a you know, a resume page we made an invit party invitation we also spent the afternoon going to the reactor what did you think of visiting the microsoft reactor in sydney and collecting on swag <laughs> i thought yes i got a lot of things to take home from that i should have actually <laughs> prepared to show you some of that but yes i got to take home a lot of sunglasses and i even got a jumper to take home so that was good yeah. and overall though the microsoft reactor if we even go back a few slides, we had some photos that I took at the Microsoft Reactor. So overall, a lot of desks there and a lot of places for working. And there was big presentation areas as well. So very fancy. And even yeah. an Xbox to play on. Very important. An Xbox to play. That's true. Yeah, that's a good time. <laughs> so from your week or most of a week as a cloud advocate, what did you think of the career, the life of a cloud advocate? What, what does it feel like to you? I thought it was very chaotic with a lot of things to do over, like you're almost doing a different thing every day. So very interesting, I thought. So getting to do a lot of programming, which I like, and 
you're never going to get bored of it because you get to do a new thing every day. Going to universities one day, live stream the next, making a website another day. Perfect. That's, yeah. <laughs> That pretty does, much does sum up my life of jumping around, got to go and see all the people, visit all the communities, teach everyone to code. So yeah, that's a good summation of my job as a cloud advocate slash me in general as a human being. Uh, so, but it was really nice to have a buddy for the week. Uh, yeah, so would Thank you me. recommend Microsoft Work Experience as a cloud advocate to a friend? Yes, absolutely I would. <laughs> That's excellent. Good to know. The, the science experiment has gone well and we can you know, do this for more kids then hopefully. Uh, yeah. So what are your plans now? What, what do you want to do next with your career, with your journey? Well, as I mentioned earlier, my plan is once I finish school, which at the moment I am doing uh, multiple computing subjects at school. So I'm enjoying those. And uh, after school, I plan on going to university for computer science. So that's the plan. And until then, I guess I'll just keep working on lots of little projects like the Connect4 I've worked on recently. So that was really fun. I've also liked, quite interested in a lot of AI-based things. So maybe in having a go at some neural network-based stuff, which I have looked at a bit, nothing too crazy though. And overall, making bots like the Connect4 bot was really fun. So to continue making things like that, improving that bot maybe maybe an upgrade to a chess bot. Don't know. We'll see. That's awesome. So as a, you know, passionate coder looking for a career in coding, what, what do you think about getting more kids into coding? Like what might attract them to join us in our techie world? I think, well, I think something that was really important for me is I don't think I would have ever gotten completely into programming if I had have jumped straight in to just programming in Python and a lot more of that sort of stuff. I think what really got me into programming was the fact that I started off doing game development in Unity. That was for the first year, that was solely what I did. And since then I've sort of tried out a bit of Python, tried out a few of things outside of a game engine. So that was good. But I think what really got me into it and interested was the fact that I was using almost a past hobby, which was gaming and combining it with programming and since then I've started going outside of that and it was good but I think just finding something that you're interested in that links with programming is a good thing to start with mm, I think that's a really like good take on the idea because there's a lot of things that people are already passionate about but coding is tricky and you do have to get over some hurdles of how finicky it is to get a programming language working and we have people using block based coding things and that does take the edge off a little bit when people are getting started but coming into it and not using blocks yeah you do really want to have like an outcome that you're really passionate about achieving otherwise you might you know get stuck and then you just won't overcome it and if you don't have that driving force you might give up before you realize how awesome you can be and how much you can actually achieve with programming so i think whether you love gaming and you want to start, you know, being a game developer, you love science, and you want to write some little programs to do, you know, take notes for your science experiments, or you love web design, uh, and you want to make a website, like there's all these different ways that you can combine uh, your hobbies with programming, like we did with the giant piano, maybe you love music, and you want to make an enormous piano out of microcontrollers, then you absolutely can do that, um, if that's something you're passionate about doing. So I think that's a really amazing take on Getting started with coding. Yep. So do you think there's anything that schools could help kids with to like create that atmosphere where they can give coding a try? Well, I think someone that has always, I've always been pretty interested in technology even before I started doing any programming. But I feel like before this year and maybe a tiny bit of last year, which was year nine for me, I feel like there was absolutely nothing programming related that my school had for me to do. So until last year, there was one subject I could pick that was a bit of programming, but that was still more block-based programming, making some apps with block programming like Scratch and that sort of thing. And we did program some like Lego robots and that was pretty cool. But once again, that was still with block programming. I would have really liked if we had a 
started doing proper programming languages a bit yeah. earlier in school, which I would have liked. And also I think if you start showing younger kids programming a lot earlier, I think there's a more of a chance that they will start liking it or enjoying it, I think. Whereas if you start only programming in year 11 or year 10, I think there's less of a chance you'll go, oh, I've already sort of wanting to do this as a future career. And so, and this seems quite hard. So I don't know if I really want to even give it a go. So, yeah. That's, <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, an excellent take, an excellent point of view on all of this. And yeah, we are in a tricky spot now where we have the national curriculum that says that we do need to be teaching coded like typed programming languages from year seven but it's really tricky for teachers because they haven't learned it themselves so yeah if you are keen to learn to program teachers out there please jump on to the code garden live streams and follow me and reach out to me and i'd love to help you get a handle on coding if you're not as confident as you would like to be uh yeah so but i think that's exactly what Zach is saying is like, we want to get ev give everyone the chance to love coding because it's like so many cool things you can do with it as Zach is discovering on his own journey, whether it's game development or making a website or making an enormous piano. So I think, yeah, giving every that one that opportunity as early as possible so they don't go, oh, I'm already going to be a doctor or I'm already going to go, going to go be an accountant or something. Give them this as a choice too before they've made up their mind, I think is an awesome idea. Uh, so I'm going to ask anyone in the comments, uh, chuck us a question for Zach if you have one, because uh, we're nearly out of time on our stream. Uh, so yep. yeah, please, Any questions, please, yeah. welcome. Yeah. Anything for Zach? He's got great takes on the questions I've just been randomly throwing out them, uh, at him. So he's got, he's got some good perspective. So get them, get them in here uh, if you have them. Otherwise, I'll ask you another question from right. my collection of random things. <laughs> So what would you say are the like attitudes of your peers, your friends at school towards programming? Uh, I think ever since I started making my own games that I've shown to them at school on my laptop and that sort of stuff, they've been interested. I think there's been a few maybe that have downloaded Unity themselves and even given it a quick go, but they've overall stopped doing it after a bit. So I think... My friends are less interested in it than I am. They don't think it's bad, but they also, I think, it's just they it's they don't have the same love for it that I do. So yeah, they yeah. haven't got the been bitten by the tech bug yet. Yeah. We do have a question in the chat from Jack. Uh, he asks, "What kind of tech are you looking forward to learning in the future? More game stuff, AI, something else? So where are you heading in your journey?" Well, in fact, very recently, within maybe the last month, I've bought myself a Raspberry Pi. Mm. So planning on doing, I haven't fully thought of what I'm going to do with that yet, but planning on doing some things with that, making maybe a bot that runs 24-7, or maybe I could run some servers on it for some games. Haven't really decided fully what I'm going to do for that, but maybe some cool programming stuff. Uh, and I'm also, yes, very still interested in maybe... AI. So I really do want to maybe as a next project, try and see if I can do anything with that. So we'll see how that goes. Fantastic. Yeah. No, a lot of people out there go and buy Raspberry Pis and they're not quite sure what to do with them, but I'm glad to hear that you do have some great ideas around what actually a Raspberry Pi would be useful for. Cause yeah, a lot of people buy them and like, Oh, I can make anything with this thing. And like you can, cause it's a tiny computer, but it's an ideal from computer for something you just want to leave on and run all the time as a server or a game, a game server or maybe yep. something you want to leave out with a little camera attached to it or something like that. So those are really good ideas for what to do with it. So if you're a student or a teacher out there who's like, what are we going to do with all these Raspberry Pis I have lying around? It sounds like Zach's got some answers for you right there. Uh, <laughs> we have another questions coming in from Sava. Um, any particular programming, programming language you are finding interesting? Um, well, so far... Most of the programming I've done at the moment is C Sharp, Python. I've done some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as well. But, yeah, they're more web-based things. So I've most of the programming I've done has been software development with C Sharp and Python. So 
I've been thinking of trying out some other ones though, so I'm not too sure yet. I was thinking C++ would be a good thing to try and give a go at because I know C++ is meant to be extremely fast. So some of the more programs like maybe my Connect Fog AI, I know that I can't set that to a very high depth when I'm uh, trying to get it to find the best move. So if I was to rewrite that program in maybe C++, it could set it to a further depth. So just a bit more of the more harder things for the computer to process C++ should be a bit faster for. So I'm finding that quite interesting and thinking that would be good to give a go at. But yeah, that's That's it, a fantastic I answer. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, Jack says C++ is used uh, used in a lot of games development, just so you know. So excellent choice if you maybe want to go down a games development line down the track uh, yeah, as I've well. Heard, um, yeah, so I know in Unreal Engine, which Unreal Engine 5 just came out as well, so a new version of it. Uh, I know you, use, you can either do a visual scripting in Unreal Engine or you can do your programming in C++, which C++, once again, is a faster option, I'm pretty sure, for that. Yeah, no, those sound fantastic. And, like, you know, you have a bunch of things up your sleeve already with, between Python, which is a great scripting language, and then C Sharp, which you've been using in Unity, and C++ seems like a great, like, lower-level language to get into. So, yeah, as well as your HTML and CSS and JavaScript on the front end, you've got your all your bases covered, really, there. So you can just pull it out, whatever one you need, when you want to do a project than that, which is really awesome to have that breadth, I think. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Let's see. Do we have any more questions? Pop them in the chat. This is your last chance to ask Zach a question, at least, you know, for now. Maybe we'll you know, rope him into doing another Code Garden <laughs> episode or something in the future. Maybe he can teach me how to use Unity in the Code Garden. That would be cool. <laughs> um, because I don't know. I've not done it yet. So that could be a fun, that could be something fun for the future. Uh, yeah. So I don't think we're, no further questions at the moment. And we are about at time. So do you have any last comments or anything you want to make? for people thinking about a t tech career, someone, a student on their tech journey or someone who's considering getting started learning with code, however old they are? Uh, I think definitely try and start programming something that you're interested in, like I did with game development. Just try and do something based off of something you previously like. And then it's quite good. I think it's very hard to start off, but it gets a lot easier. I think lots of people give up just before they start understanding it properly. So I think that it's definitely a, easier than people think, but people don't realize that it's going to get easier once you start learning it, which it definitely does. Absolutely. There are a few little things, hurdles to get over along the way. And if you do want to get started with programming, do join me in the code garden and I will hopefully help you get over some of those little hiccups that can be like, off-putting at the start because you're like well here I am alone and I don't know how to get past this one little thing and it's just a tiny little you know error in your code and it can seem insurmountable when you're tackling it by yourself so do jump into the code garden ask me any questions or in any of my other stream series uh and you know the other cloud advocates around the world and around Australia jump on their stream series and hopefully they can give you a hand in getting started with coding and if you do have any you know you want to get started with something, you have a recommendation or a request for something I could do in the code garden because there's some technology that you're really keen to get started with, but you don't know where to start. Do let me know. You can uh, tweet at me or, uh, yeah, get in touch with me however you want on LinkedIn or whatever, and I will. I do take requests. So uh, it's been fantastic having Zach here with us today, and it was fantastic having him for a week with me for work experience and being my little sidekick uh so yeah i can't wait to have more new work experience students in the future it was just a fun time and uh, you really get i get i get that personal close-up experience of seeing somebody learning which is just you know a great part of my job because i can't always see you on the other side of my screen uh so yes thank you so much zach for spending a week with me and coming back to tell everybody about it uh it's been a fantastic time having and you. thank you renee and the microsoft reactor for having me for the work experience as well it was really fun so yeah. thank you <laughs> we we love to we love to have it we love to have fun in the microsoft reactor uh and here we are we've got sarah back to tell us more about you know what we could do for the microsoft reactor is possibly doing a really fun survey 
That's it. Thanks, Renee. And thank you, Zach, for joining us today. So we have, as Renee mentioned, all the links that you'll need in the comment section there, including the survey with the event code 16323 for today. If you have time to fill that out, that would be awesome. All the links, so the additional resources are just a bit further up in the chat there. And if you wanted to um, reference back any of Zach's cool work um, or share it with your network, you can um, share the YouTube link there in the comment section the on-demand version will be available straight after today um, and that's all we have time for so thank you again zach and renee and we'll see you next time for another microsoft reactor live stream event thank you everyone and yeah hopefully see you for another episode of coding the next generation in the future where i wrangle another student to come and join us in the microsoft reactor <laughs> thank you everyone thanks zach and have a good afternoon or evening or good morning <laughs> Thanks, everyone.